So it is Maker Monday and today's video is going to be a pattern designed by me that you can download from our website. This is a picnic roll. I made three or four different versions of this before I got to a thing that I like. The one I made before this didn't have the little flap on the top. So when I rolled up my silverware, they fell out of the top. So what we have is a little flap that covers the tops of your silverware. And in the one I'm gonna show you today, we're gonna put the elastic on this side because I like it to roll up better over here. But in the meantime, there is a wine bottle opener, a knife, a spoon, a fork, and a napkin that all matches. Okay, so we're gonna show you how to make this two colored napkin. I'm gonna show you how to hem this so it's all really nice and easy to make. Then this folds over the top and you roll this up like this. The reason I want the elastic on the other side is because I think it works better when the napkin is folded on the outside. It makes it a little fluffier. And then the elastic wraps around the outside. So when you get to your picnic, you can unroll. You can take your silver out and use it. You can take your napkin out and use it. And then if you need to, you can flip this over and use it like a placemat. I also like to, when we go places to eat and there's a food truck or whatever, I like to take my own silverware so I use less plastic. So this is something you can just keep in the trunk of your car if you want to. It doesn't have to be a picnic roll. It can just be a way that you um, cut down on your plastic usage. The pattern will tell you what size to cut all your pieces. And we also have a kit. So if you want the fabric that I'm using, we have a kit for that. In the kit, I give you enough fabric that you can make, you can alternate your fabrics here. So you can either have the watermelon as your focal or the ants as your focal. And then same thing with your napkin. So when we make the napkin, you can alternate those as well. This is gonna be our pocket piece. These are gonna be our two main fabrics. The smaller of the yellow fabric is gonna be our pocket lining and the larger is gonna be the top flap. First thing we're gonna do is take our pocket flap and we're gonna fold this in half and we're gonna press it. Okay, so we want a nice crisp seam there. We're also going to take our pocket lining and our pocket front and right sides together, we're going to sew a seam right sides together. All right, so I realized when I put these together that these were the same size. They're not actually the same size. So your pattern has the right size instructions. So we're going to take, this is our pocket front. This is our pocket lining. I've pressed it toward the pocket front. It doesn't really matter that much, but I just always like to have a direction to press. Then we're gonna fold these wrong sides together and we're gonna press this again. This is what this should look like. So you have a little lip at the top as an accent piece. We're gonna take both of our feature fabrics. They are the same size. And I pressed this before we did this just to give ourselves a reference line. We're going to put our flap and our focal fabric together and I'm going to sew this piece to this end and this piece to this end. Now I've got this long piece of fabric with my yellow in the middle and my watermelons on both ends. I pressed one toward the watermelon and one toward the yellow just because I'm gonna fold it in half again on that original fold line that we made and that's gonna decrease the bulk a little bit because one seam's gonna go one way and the other seam's gonna go the other way. Doesn't really matter that much because we're gonna put some fleece in the middle. So I've got my piece of fusible fleece and the measurements of the fleece should give you a seam allowance around the outside of this. So if you give yourself about a quarter inch seam allowance, right, around the edge, we're gonna cover the watermelon and part of the yellow with this. It helps if you press it from the fabric side first because the glue is on the fabric side and it helps it to melt. So we're gonna fuse this to here only on the one side. So I fused my fleece on the back of my, my patchwork. I'm gonna take my pocket with my ants on it. We want the pocket lining to be face, with, face down with the watermelon pieces. And I just wanna pin this for now because I, don't, I wanna be able to fold this together. So I'm gonna put a couple of pins in, but I wanna put my pins in in a way that I can take it out before I sew it. So I'm gonna put a couple of pins just around the edge here, just to hold it in place because in a second, I'm not gonna be able to see it. Okay, so I'm gonna just pin a couple of times 
We're gonna take the other watermelon piece and flip it over so that my edges all line up. This is why I put the pins the way I did because I don't wanna, I didn't wanna have pins on the inside because when I, I'm gonna turn this in a second and I don't wanna bleed. So if I put my pins this way, now I can take my pins out, I can hold where they were, I can take my pins out and I can turn them so they're on the inside. This way I don't have to pull my pins out as I sew and everything's gonna line up. I'm gonna add a couple extra pins just because I'm gonna sew all the way around this whole thing. All right, now we're going to sew all the way around this pouch. I'm going to leave an opening. So what I typically do, I don't like starting out here where it's floppy, I'd rather start sewing where the stabilization of the fleece is because it's gonna move a little bit easier. So I'm gonna leave myself a nice wide opening. I absolutely hate turning things inside out, so I try to make it as easy on myself as possible. So I'm gonna leave a good like three, four inch opening. Okay, so I put a couple of marks with a friction pen. I'm gonna start sewing, we're gonna do a little bit wider than a quarter inch seam. So we're gonna do about a three eighths inch seam. I'm gonna stitch along here. I'm gonna stop in the corner. If it helps you to mark a spot that says stop, then do that before you get to your machine. So we're gonna go to here, we're gonna sew all the way off the fold on both sides. Okay, so we'll start here, back stitch, and sew off the end, start here, back stitch, and sew off the end. And when you realize that you forgot to put the elastic in, like I just did, we're gonna take our chunk of elastic. I'm going to take out the seam that I sewed here together right here because I forgot to put my elastic in. I like to put it just about an inch below where the pocket starts because then you have lots of um, fabric or lots of stabilization for the elastic to pull and you don't have to wrap it around the whole thing. So I'm gonna take my bit of elastic like I should have done, put it inside that little opening that I made. You could do this ahead of time, which is what the pattern's gonna tell you to do. And I'm going to use my hemostats to put that in the crack. All right, so that's inside there. I like to line my elastic up so it's sticking out just a little bit so I can see it and I wanna make sure it really gets stitched down. And then I'm gonna stitch this down. So I'm gonna go over my elastic back and forth a couple of times, okay? We're gonna pretend that's already done. And then we're going to snip these corners just about a quarter of an inch, all right? I don't snip the top, just the bottoms. Okay, a couple of tips. I hate turning things inside out, we talked about that. My hemostats are my best friend to do this easier. The other thing I'm gonna suggest is I usually will take my opening right here and I'll press this back before I do my turning. That makes the edge just a little bit smoother. So you'll see where your seam allowance is, okay? kind of finger press where your seam allowance is. And then I actually go over to my iron and press this flat. That's gonna make this easier when you turn it to make a top stitch. You can do that with the other side as well. So if you wanna flip this back and press it too, it's a little bit harder because there is the fleece in the inside, but you can press the whole thing if you choose to. Take my hemostats, I'm gonna stick them in the opening. I made the opening big enough to put my whole hand inside because like I said, I do not enjoy turning things inside out. Open your hemostats before you put them in there. Go up to the corner, the furthest corner away, open the hemostats, put your fingernail in there and then pinch your fingernail to grab the fabric and then lock it. You hear this? Lock your hemostats and then just pull it through the opening. So we're gonna pull the furthest corner away through the opening first. And then since we left a nice big opening, the rest of it's gonna turn really easy. All right, so you've got the whole thing turned right way out. Kinda looks like a pillowcase right now. I'm gonna use my precision turning tool and poke my corners out. I love this tool because I can really push on the corners and it won't pop through. And I'm gonna push the other corners up too. After I get my corners how I like them to look, as, which is as sharp as possible, 
I then like to take my turning tool and run it all the way down the seam to push those seams out. Do that in the bottom too. Flip it over, run it down the other seam. See how it's already looking almost like it's been pressed? Okay, and then we're gonna run it down the end. Now, I'm going, since we already made that, that fold pressed, it's gonna pop underneath there a whole lot easier now and make that cleaner. Okay, so those are gonna go together as well. So I'm gonna take this to my iron. I'm gonna press the whole thing. Then what I'm going to do, when I press the whole thing, I'm gonna make this fold really crisp again. And then I'm gonna top stitch from here, down the side, along the bottom, closing up that hole, and then back up the side again. And we're gonna stop. We're not gonna press, or we're not gonna sew that. You can, in fact, if you choose to, stop along where the fleece is, okay? But I'm gonna show you why I don't press the top, or I don't sew the top. So I'm gonna go and press this and top stitch. All right, so quick pressing tip that I didn't think about saying before this. You'll see that this is all now pressed under and nice and, nice and square. Press it from the bottom up toward that fold. What that's gonna do is it's gonna make everything really nice and even and it's gonna make that fold automatically really square. If you start pressing from the top down, since there's no fleece under this part, it can get a little floppy and then you can end up with a crease up here. So I have shown you before in previous videos how to top stitch using your stitch in the ditch foot. You can do that technique if you want to. I'm gonna show you another technique using your quarter inch foot. If I put my quarter inch foot on, or if you have a quarter inch foot without the guide, you can also use the very edge of this foot here as a, as a reference point. So what I'll do is I'll bump my needle over just one notch or two, depending on how narrow you want it to be. And then I'll use the edge of my quarter inch foot as my reference for doing my top stitching. I'm gonna do a tie off stitch instead of a back stitch. That's gonna make a really clean edge. And then I'm gonna use the edge of that quarter inch foot as my guide to the edge of my fabric. Another thing that you can do if you feel like you're not getting through your fabric as effectively as you'd like, you can make your stitch a little bit longer. Make sure that, remember that this is not attached. So when you get to that, make sure you stitch over it and that your foot doesn't pick it up. Same thing with the elastic. Make sure your foot doesn't pick up the edge of the elastic as you're going around the corner. And we're just gonna top stitch all the way around our, um, our picnic roll. Take one more stitch so I can make that a nice turn. Okay, when I get to my opening, I wanna make sure that everything's tucked up underneath and that those two folds, those folds that I pressed in there are lined up nicely. So that's gonna add your top stitch, but it's also gonna close up your seam and it's gonna look really clean. When I get to the top, I'm gonna to do a tie off stitch so my stitches are really neat. Now I'm gonna take my fold up here and I'm gonna fold it over on the edge of my fleece and I'm just gonna press it really firmly so I have a reference line. You can iron it if you choose to. I just wanna see where the edge of my fleece is. I'm gonna use a ruler and I'm gonna mark, I like to mark about five inches from either side and I'm gonna start up where that fold is. I'm gonna use a friction pen and I'm gonna mark a line all the way down my roll. Okay, I'm gonna turn this around and do the same thing the other way. Use a color you can see. If you're using a darker fabric, you can use a chalk pen or whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna mark two lines there. Now, depending on what you wanna hold in yours, um, I would make 
you, you could add even an extra pocket if you want to. So like if you wanted to put a straw and some chopsticks, you could put two lines here and you could put one line here. You can mark this any way that you want to. I leave the one on the side open because then I can put my napkin in there. Okay, so I'm gonna make this one a little bit different. The other one, I did a fork and a knife and a spoon and a wine bottle opener. So for this one, I'm gonna make a line that I can put some chopsticks in. And I'm only gonna mark the pocket part. So from the yellow line down. So that looks like it's about an inch and a half. And then I'll do another one that's about, mm, let's say two inches so we can put our wine bottle opener there. And then we could put our knife here. Then I'm gonna split this one in half so we need to measure what the difference is. And we're gonna make one more pocket here. All right, so now my favorite way to stitch these is I want to start just a little bit off the pocket. I'm gonna start about here. I'm gonna back stitch a couple times to really stabilize that opening. I'm gonna stitch down here. I'm gonna try to copy my top stitching and stitch back up and back stitch it. I'm gonna stitch here and I'm gonna go down here to here, back stitch it, okay? And then you just have to do this other long one. I do like to do, um, if you want to, you can go say up and then back down to really stabilize the long ones. So you could go up and back down and then over here and up and stop and same thing here, okay? You can go up and down and really stabilize all of the stitches if you want to, but I really wanna stabilize this one here, okay? You can increase your stitch length if you want this to look a little bit more like quilting but I really want these pockets to be stabilized. So I'm gonna use my J foot because it's got an open plastic window and then I can see what I'm doing. And I can take my reference mark right here and you can, if you, if you feel like you need to stabilize across the top here, you can do that as well. So how about just for fun we do that. We're gonna stitch right along the edge of our fusible fleece. I'm gonna do a tie off stitch. And we're gonna stitch right up to where our line is here. And stop. And I'm using the open, the visible foot because I can line my, my needle up right there with that crack in the middle of my foot. And the reason I like that is because then I can use that, that crack in the foot as a guide of where I'm gonna stitch. And I just sew right along that line. Remember again that your pocket is not stitched down, so don't let it fold over. Okay, and when we get to the bottom here, we're gonna turn our corner and we're gonna stitch right on top of our top stitching. And we turn around and go back up. Again, if you wanna double stitch all of these so you don't have a bunch of tie offs, you can. I would stitch one or two stitches past your pocket, turn it back around, go back down. to finish, finish stitching off that top of our fusible fleece. If you, if you don't want to have tie-offs, you can just keep stitching around your top stitching. And then you can tie it off right here, right where you started.
All right, so now we're gonna press off our, our friction marks and then we're gonna show you how to roll her up. Now we're gonna make our napkin. So in your kit, if you bought the kit, you have enough fabric that you can make the roll plus a napkin and you can use the watermelon as the focal fabric or the ant as the focal fabric, depending on how you wanna do it, okay? So since my watermelon was my focal fabric on my roll, I'm gonna make it the focal fabric on my napkin. The pattern tells you what size to cut everything. <coughs> and we are going to do some cool mitering on this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use either my acorn spray or my flatter spray, whichever you prefer. And I'm gonna let it sort of sink in. And I'm gonna let it dry just a little bit before I start pressing it. This is one of my favorite tools for doing hemming. It is a hot hemmer. What it is, is it's a ruler you can iron on. So it's a little bit flexible, it's kind of felty, so your fabric's gonna stick to it. The reason I like to do this with this is because if you can eyeball stuff really well, or you think you can, which is what I normally do, I normally think I can eyeball stuff really well, and then I go and measure it, and I was like, oh, that's not what I wanted. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna take my fabric, and I'm gonna eyeball it. That looks like it's about good. And when I roll my fabric over onto the ruler part of this, I can push this over so that it makes a strong crease right here. And as I pull my fabric over, the ruler will kind of line up in the crack. Then I can press this along the edge of my ruler. So since I can iron on this, I can move this around and line that up with my half inch line. All right now, if you wanna do an inch hem, you can do that too. You just roll it over to the inch part. However you want this to be, if you wanna do three quarters of an inch, you roll it over further. I like half an inch for this um, because I don't wanna, I wanna see quite a bit of my fabric in this. All right, so we're going to use our hot hammer all the way around our piece of fabric. And the reason I pressed it before, or I sprayed it beforehand is now, as I'm pressing this, I'm getting a really crisp, clean edge. Pull the ruler out. And I always pull the ruler out and then after I've made my little crisp edge, I will then steam it. Because that's also gonna give me a really clean line. All right, so this way, I don't have to use a fusible tape if I don't want to. And since I'm gonna top stitch this, I really don't need to. I'm gonna do all four sides of my napkin that way. Don't worry too much about the corners being perfect because we're gonna cut those off anyway. So if your, fold, if, your corners, if your corners are a little bit messy like that, it doesn't matter because we're gonna cut that off. So this one that has a quarter inch miter has two 45 degree lines that intersect right there at a quarter inch. This one has another 45 degree line that's white and one that's black but see how they intersect at, well, like an inch? We're gonna use this intersection this time instead because I wanna have a nice thick miter here. I'm not trying to do an accurate quarter inch. I'm gonna take that intersection and I'm gonna line it up with the outside of our already hemmed piece of fabric. With my friction pen, I'm gonna mark a line on the wrong side and I'm gonna do this on all four corners, right? So just do like you did. We're gonna do all four sides using that bigger 45 degree intersection. I pick up my piece of fabric and fold it in on the diagonal like this. What I have is on the corner over here, you can see your line, okay? So I usually do two at a time. I'll put a pin over here and I'll put a pin over here And then I'm gonna sew right on, right on the line here. I usually do two corners at once. I'll do these two corners, I'll sew them, and then I'll open it up and I'll fold it the other way like this and I'll pin the other two corners. If you wanna do all four corners now, you can, it doesn't matter. Um, sometimes it's easier to do it before you sew it because then it's not already pinched off for you. So if you wanna pin all four corners, you can. And then we're gonna sew on the line on all four pieces. So I use my 
um, my J foot so I can line up that line right down the middle of my foot. Just top stitch it. You don't even really have to worry about back stitching it because we're gonna turn this all, all right way out. So we're just gonna sew on the line and then I'm gonna show you the next thing. All right, we're gonna pull our pins out and then with about a quarter inch seam allowance, we're gonna snip away the extra fabric on all four corners, okay? You can, if you want to, you can cut it and then sew it, but I just find it easier to um, cut it away after the fact because it doesn't have to be a perfectly accurate quarter inch seam. You just wanna make sure we're getting all the pieces in there. All right, so now, after I've cut away my extra fabric on everything, when I lay this down, and I pop my corners out, they're going to make almost like a little basket. So I just sort of use my thumb and turn all my corners out and then I go back again with my precision turning tool and just push the corners out on all four sides. I'm gonna press this now. Yeah, I know there's no middle in it, but we're gonna get there. Once our corners are all pressed out and flat, go ahead and press your piece. I like to use steam in this step as well, mostly because I didn't press these flat before I turned it, because it doesn't really matter because you're not gonna see them. So if I use steam, then those seams are gonna lay flat. It's gonna kind of push those seams underneath down flat. All right, so get you some nice crisp edges on the outside here. Then I want you to find the middle. So fold it and fold it. And then you don't have to press you don't have to press it really good. You're just trying to find the middle of your pieces. You do want to see though I press both folds because I want to see where my, um, my middle parts are out here because I've done the same thing with my insert. I have folded it and folded it. So now I know where my middles are. I can line up my middles on the top and the bottom. Tuck it up underneath there. and line up your centers, okay? I know I'm using plaid fabric, so it may be not the easiest way to see it, but again, hmm, doesn't really matter because we're gonna top stitch this, all right? So there's a couple things you can do if you're nervous about this being really flat. You can spray this with 505 spray so that it will lay flat before you go, but honestly, this is another really great spot for steam because what's gonna happen is the steam is gonna make your fabric stick together, okay? So I've got my piece all laid out. The middles are under there. We've got a nice seam allowance all the way around. Double check and make sure that you're not at the very edge of any of your fabrics. You can pin here if you choose to. If the machine you have doesn't have really great grip in the um, feed dogs, you might wanna really pin this but that's up to you, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna top stitch this around the edge. So we're gonna go over to our machine. I'm gonna show you some tips with that. So I've shown you previously in videos how to use your stitch in the ditch foot to top stitch. I'm gonna show you how to get there with your J foot as well, since that's what we already have on here. Um, there's, a couple, there's so many different ways you can use your feet and move your machine around to get what you want. So here's the middle of my J foot. Here's the edge. See this, just where the foot is here? If you bump your needle all the way over to the right, <coughs> if I just keep moving my needle all the way over as far as it's gonna go, this is gonna give me just about a 16th of an inch. If I turn my fabric around the other way, which I know feels a little counterintuitive because we always kind of hang our fabric off that way. And I drop my foot and then I ride my fabric right along the inside right there. So you can do a couple different things. You can ride your fabric right along the inside. Your needle's gonna give you just a really skinny top stitch. 
If you want to have a little wider top stitch, move your needle over, or move your foot over, and you can stitch with the edge of your foot. For this particular product or project, I'm going to move it over to where I'm top stitching very much at the edge, mostly because I don't want to wash napkins. And if I throw this, I mean, huh, I do want to wash napkins. It's kind of the point. I don't want to press them after I wash them. And if I give myself a wide top stitch, chances are these are going to come out of the laundry needing to be pressed and don't nobody have time for that. So I'm going to use the inside edge of my foot. I'm going to make a tie off stitch and then right along the edge of that foot. So you don't really have to see what your needle's doing. You just have to see what your foot is doing. I'm going to get a really narrow hem. And I'm going to just go all the way around my napkin, top stitching that. You have one other option here. If you want to even stabilize your napkin a little bit more, you can flip this around and top stitch around the edge. Now here's where I'm going to use the edge of my foot so that I have a little bit wider stitch. So this way also I can show you the difference in the thicknesses. And I can just go all the way around the outside. All right, so now all that's left to do is we're gonna snip our little threads away and now we're done. Now, if, the, if you really want to, you could go back again and press this napkin so it looks all fancy and pretty. Um, you could fold some crease lines in it so it's gonna fold up nice in your picnic roll. But look how cute she is. All right, so now we have our picnic roll and we can put our goodies in our picnic roll. So again, I made extra pockets in this one because I'm probably gonna put some chopsticks in there. But my wine bottle opener will fit right there. And my knife will fit right there. And my spoon and my fork. And then I can take my fancy little napkin here and fold it up. And tuck it in the pocket. And again, now you'd be the envy of all the other people at the park because you've got this really cute little picnic roll that bundles up and you can roll it. And like I said, I put the elastic on the other side because now I've got my, my padding from my napkin on the edge. Your loop just goes around the whole thing and holds it all secure. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's Maker Monday. I hope you have as much fun with this as I did. Again, the pattern is going to be on our website as a digital download. You can just download it um, with all the written instructions and measurements to it. Um, there is a kit that will be attached to today's video with this fabric, as well as the fleece and the elastic, everything you need to do it, just add thread. And um, yeah, so I am a big fan of sustainability as well as picnics. So we're gonna have a couple other videos that show you how to bougie up your, your picnic game. Um, so stay tuned for those. All right, see you later.